Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our second session in the State Representative Cam Buckner Virtual Job Fair Series. Today, we will be hearing from nine employers hiring for various positions across multiple industries. Each employer will speak for approximately five minutes to give you some information about their company and will highlight the job openings they currently have. If you have questions at any time, please type them into the chat and we will address them during the Q&A session that will be taking place after all employers have presented. At the end of the Q&A session, we will hear from the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership, IDES, and Illinois WorkNet to learn about some additional resources that are available to assist you with your job search. If you have not already, please be sure to register for Friday's breakout room session, where you will have an opportunity to communicate directly with employer representatives. A link to that registration page will be provided in the chat later. Please note, you will need to be sure to register for each session individually. Today's session is being recorded and will be made available in the employer booths for you to refer to later. Now I am pleased to introduce Kim with the American Dental Association. Kim. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for having us. We are very excited to be here and talk about some of our job opportunities. My name is Kim Miles. I'm the recruiter for the American Dental Association. Uh, with me, I have Darshna Patel, who is my supervisor. She's the senior manager of talent acquisition and employee relations. Go to the next slide. And just to talk briefly about us, we were founded in 1859. We're the largest organization representing dentistry in the United States. We have over 163,000 members. Our headquarters is located downtown Chicago. And we also have uh, offices in Washington, DC, as well as Gaithersburg, Maryland. In addition um, to the ADA, we have two for-profit um, entities as well as one LLC entity. You go to the next slide. Our mission is helping dentists to succeed and our vision is achieving optimal health for all. We have seven core values, which is um, commitment to members, integrity, excellence, oral health, um, science and evidence-based, diversity and inclusivity. Why work for us? Well, we were named the 2019 Top Workplace by the Chicago Tribune. We have a glass door rating of 4.4 out of five. Great downtown location. We have awesome benefits. And we also involve employees in our various communities. Now we have a lot of job openings, 10 job openings um, listed on the uh, presentation, but I'm only gonna go over a few um, in the interest of time. We have an application developer position. Uh, the person in this position would write code for our ADA practice transitions application. Um, it requires a bachelor's degree in information technology or similar field with a minimum of three years of programming experience. In lieu of a bachelor's degree, seven years of experience is required. The next position I'll talk about is the assessment specialist or testing specialist position. This position is responsible for the test development activities associated uh, to the testing programs we have at the ADA. Uh, the minimum requir uh, requirements for this position is a bachelor's degree with a minimum of five years work experience, working on projects independently in a fast paced environment. The next a uh, tab I will talk about is the Coordinator Dental Quality Alliance and Registry. This is an administrative position that is responsible for organizing meetings and conferences, preparing agenda materials, monitoring all the invoices and expenses for both programs on a monthly basis. Now it does require a bachelor's degree with a minimum of three years of administrative or customer service experience. However, in lieu of a bachelor's, we do require seven years of experience. The next position I'll talk about is the manager dental team continuing education position. This position is responsible for the successful planning, implementation, and execution of the ADA's dental team CE programs. It requires a bachelor's degree and a minimum of five years experience in developing, curating, and managing educational content. In lieu of a bachelor's, a minimum of nine years of experience is required. 
The next position is a manager of elder care and dental health and wellness. This position focuses on programs regarding access to oral health care for the aging and special needs population, as well as health and wellness for dentists. It requires a bachelor's degree with a minimum of five years experience with oral health policy and understanding of epidemiology literature. And the final position I'll talk about is a member service advisor. This is a customer service position. So it's working in our call center, providing customer service and working on ad hoc assignments. It requires a bachelor's degree and a minimum of three years experience with customer service or in a call center. If you don't have a degree, it's fine. A minimum of seven years of experience is required. We do have um, more openings and a more in-depth detail about these job openings on our website. If you can go to the next slide. Our job site is located at www.ada.org slash jobs. You'll see all our jobs there. Um, we um, put jobs on there on a regular basis. If you have any questions about any jobs that are on that website, on our career site, feel free to contact me. My information is on the screen as well as Darshan Patel, her information is on the screen as well. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for that presentation, Kim. I just do want to uh, reiterate that if you do have any questions for Kim regarding employment with the American Dental Association, please feel free to enter those into the chat. We'll get those questions answered for you during our Q&A session that'll be taking place after all employers have presented. Thank you again, Kim. Our next presenter Thanks. will be Thanks. Sean with Comcast. Sean, are you available to present? Hello, yes, I am here. Um, and I am also joined by my colleague, Hagar Duell. Fantastic. You got there Hello. somewhere? <laughs> Perfect. So yes, welcome. We are uh, Comcast. You can actually go to uh, the next slide. Um, so quickly wanting to go through our products and services uh, uh, a little quickly, hopefully most of you are familiar with Comcast, um, our brand Xfinity, hopefully. Most of you, if not all, have our some of our products and services in your home. Um, you can move on to the next slide, Daniel. So uh, really quick, just as, you know, in case you don't know, this is just a, a little brief um, picture of, of all of our products and services that in this role you would be working with, or these roles, excuse me. Um, you can move on to the next slide. So our, our big products, Xfinity Voice, which is the home phone, TV, uh, cable, basically, internet, our Xfinity Home Security, um, and Xfinity Mobile, which is our newest product. We can move to the next slide. Um, and then along uh, the, the same lines, not only do we have our products and services, but we are uh, obviously a very, very large company. So we have ties uh, to all of these different organizations and uh, companies that you see listed. Um, we, uh, we did buy NBC Universal, so we own the parks, we own Comcast Sportsnet, um, Sky, which is global. Uh, so obviously a lot of different um, opportunities as well um, to become, uh, you know, across the Comcast uh, NBC Universal company. We can move on to the next. So really getting into the meat and potatoes, what are positions uh, that we have? We have basically two different functions that we are hiring for. I'll go over the retail sales function. Um, this is inside of our store. So if you haven't visited one of our Xfinity stores yet, definitely highly, re highly recommend that you do that. Um, this particular role uh, is a retail sales consultant. Um, there are uh, part-time, full-time um, opportunities that we have across um, Chicago, a little bit Indiana as well. Um, basically, what this position is, and I'm not gonna read it all, you guys can read as well, but um, it, it is inside of the retail uh, location and it is you know, evaluating customers' needs, obviously first and foremost, um, providing customer service for all of the customers, whatever their issues are, paying bills, um, getting new service, having technical questions, you are acting um, as their support, but then also able to upsell additional products and services. So this particular role does have sales goals um, that you will have to meet. Uh, if you move on to the next uh, slide, this role is a little different, still inside of our store, uh, also part-time, full-time opportunities. 
that we have. This is a non-sales customer service role inside of our store. So no sales goals um, attached to this position. Um, and again, it is very much customer service, working directly with customers and their mobile services. So porting their information over, you know, data transferring their new phones, very much customer service, um, a little bit of inventory as well. So a little bit of stocking um, in our stores, doing some of those, you know, merchandise sets, but no sales attached to this position. Uh, the next slide. So some things that you need to know about the two different positions and our stores in general. Um, typically, because it is retail, we are open seven days a week. So 11 to five on Sundays, Saturdays, nine to eight. Um, we do have some old, older stores. I don't know, I don't think we have any um, openings at, uh, in those stores right now, but Xfinity stores are open seven days a week. For full-time, it's 40 hours a week and part-time is 28 to 30. We do um, require uh, open availability for our part, our first, excuse me, full timers, um, and weekend availability um, for our part timers. So it doesn't mean you're going to work every weekend, but we do require more of an open schedule uh, because it is retail. Our dress code is is pretty casual: black gym shoes, jeans, and we provide a Comcast top. So whether that's a T, a polo, um, whatever that is. Compensation for the sales position. You get uh, an hourly rate, could be at 1185 or 13, depending on which location it is. And the best part is uncapped, com complete uncapped commission. So the more you sell, more you make, no cap on how much you can make. Um, the other role is a flat $15 an hour position. That is the non-sales role. Uh, you can move on to the next slide. And I'll ha hand it over to Hagar. All right. So real quickly, um, what Sean and I are going to share are just a snapshot of some of the frontline roles that we have available here at Comcast. Of course, you can definitely check out our website at Comcast Careers for a myriad, a variety of many multiple opportunities that you can definitely uh, review and uh and some, you know, some much information over four. Uh, what I'm going to review is the residential technician role. And these are your tech installers, those who come into your home, install the cable, troubleshoot, or service the, outs the exterior of the home. Um, these uh, positions do not require uh, experience. We actually prefer you not have any. Uh, we do go over an extensive training period um, for this role. Um, and our pretty much what we do is ensure that our customers are aware of the products and services and educating them on what what they have is uh, on what they have, essentially. Um, as I mentioned previously, some of the services that you're going to be responsible for are just changing, uh, troubleshooting, um, it's just basic service calls. And so we will have an extensive training on that. We can go over the next slide. So what you need to know about this role, the two areas that we are currently looking to fulfill uh, openings for is the uh, Chicago area and our Carroll Stream office. Uh, the Carroll Stream is our technician uh, union shop. So the hourly rate uh, it varies because of those two offices in between, bonuses and career advancement. Our frontline roles do provide a 5% uh, bonus banked in. And so every three months you're provided a payout on that. Um, what's good about being a technician is that you're able to bring your truck home. You go straight from job to home or home to job. Uh, we do anticipate some, uh, expect someone to be very flexible as some weekends and holidays will be required to work. Um, I referenced the 90 days of training uh, that is provided within a virtual classroom because of where we are in the COVID environment um, that can change as we evolve um, out of this pandemic, hopefully. Uh, attendance for the first 90 days is required, and this is pretty much standard for all of our uh, openings. And um, we provide you with the tools, boots, uniforms. We outfit you with everything necessary to be successful on day one. Um, the shifts are phenomenal. Uh, we do 10 four shifts. And what that means is we work 10 hour days, uh, four days a week, and you have three consecutive days off. So you get to select the shift of either being off on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, or off on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Next slide. Well, I kind of did a dance there. Um, I'll go over those position openings. I mentioned Carol Stream and uh, Chicago. The next slide. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So if you are able, we'll provide the, the, the presentation where you're able to hover over the QR code and be able to uh, go right into the application. Next over. Sean, you wanna jump into this one or should I just go over? 
Yeah, I can I can jump okay. over it really quick. I know we're, we're running out of time here. So yeah. really quickly, the, the best part, uh, I think Higar can, can agree, the best part of working for Comcast is you basically get our free services. Um, cable, internet, home security, I mean, everything in your home, you pretty much, it's pretty much free, um, which is great. Uh, you also get four complimentary tickets per year uh, for Universal Orlando or Hollywood theme parks. Um, and then there's hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of different discounts that we also provide um, on, on a website that you can utilize. Can, next slide. All right, uh, some of the benefits, it's just too much to review. You'll be provided this on day one of employment, correct, Sean? And so again, we jumpstart everyone with the 401k plan. We do have doctors on demand. We have phenomenal benefits, uh, health benefits, should I say rather. All of these are available on day one of employment. So it's phenomenal advantage to take a, to take a, to take advantage of, should I say rather. Uh, medical, dental, vision, and life, uh, insurance, it's just too much to mention, but um, essentially we do provide these opportunities. Sean, you want to jump in if anything else I may have added? No, I think that's, I think that's it. I think that might be our last kind of rushing through it, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you. And these yep. are employee outsource groups, yeah. Yep, and we have employee resource groups. You know, obviously, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion is, is one of our biggest missions right now and goals to, to ensure that, you know, we remain inclusive. So, we do have employee resource groups that you are able to enjoy, uh, join, excuse me, on day yeah. one. Next slide. All right, now that's the last slide. That's so there's it. our website. <laughs> there's our website um, and there's there's us. So um, you can always visit our website. Um, and Daniel, I don't know if the presentation is gonna go out to everyone, but there, there are QR codes, as Hagar mentioned, that'll take you directly to the positions. So. Fantastic. Thank you both to Sean and to Hagar for your presentation today. And just to answer that question real quick, Sean, the session today has been recorded. After the session, I will be uploading it to Illinois WorkNet, uh, where job seekers will be able to access it, of course, you know, well after the event ends today as well. And those QR codes will be up on the screen. We can also provide presentations uh, to the folks that uh, request them as well. So thank you both for your presentation. I just do want to note again, if you do have any questions for the Comcast team, please feel free to enter those into the chat and we'll get those answered during the Q&A that will be taking place after all employers have presented. Thank you both. Our next presenter will be Fifth Third Bank. Heather, are you available to present? I am. Give me one moment to navigate to your slide here. We can begin. Great. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. I am Heather Nigliazzo. I'm one of the talent acquisition consultants here at Fifth Third Bank. Um, and I'm going to go over um, some of uh, a little bit more about our company and the positions that we have available. So this is just some brief history information in regards to Fifth Third Bank. So uh, we've been around since 1858. Uh, our bank has been helping to improve the well-being of individuals, families, business, businesses, and communities, uh, in addition to providing financial products and services. Um, you can see in 1908, with the turn of the century, came the union of the Third National Bank and the Fifth National Bank to form Fifth Third National Bank of Cincinnati on June 1st of 1908. Next slide. Uh, this is just going to show you a little bit about our geographic and market presence, kind of, um, we actually, the numbers are probably more now, but right now it shows that we've got a little over a thousand banking centers, and we probably, actually, I know we have more than 2,400 um, ATMs, and then uh, ranking of number 325 on the Fortune 500. We operate on four main businesses. So that's commercial banking, branch banking, consumer lending, and wealth and asset management. Uh, over 19,000 employees. And uh, we are building our presence here in Chicago. Uh, we mer um, Fifth Third Bank actually acquired MB Financial Bank May of 2019. And so we are building that footprint as well here in the Chicagoland area. Our vision is to be the one bank people most value and trust. And we do have bank core values that we live by every day. And those are integrity, respect, inclusion, one bank and accountability. 
Um, we also are very involved with helping individuals and communities within Chicago and since anywhere where we have a presence. Um, we're a leader in corporate social responsibility, helping create vibrant communities through our enterprise investment fund. Um, we provide financial products and services that we want for our own families, competitively priced with clear terms and disclosures and offering fair and consistent service. Next slide. Um, this is just to show you that, uh, you know, some pictures and, and who we kind of work with to serve our communities. Um, we have a special day, it's called, um, fifth third day, so it's May 3rd, where our employers have the opportunity to volunteer and work throughout the community for that day. Um, this is just covering, again, the lines of businesses and the main one that I'm gonna be talking about in terms of what we have available is branch banking. So our financial centers serve as that primary point of contact to all of our customers where we're able to provide a full range of deposit and lending products to those individuals, as well as products designed to meet the specific needs of small businesses, including cash management services. We do offer some other opportunities within our commercial banking and consumer lending and wealth and asset management, but the biggest one that we have available right now is for our retail branch um, positions. So one of the roles is a customer service representative, which is also considered a teller. So you're coming in, you're the you're front facing with our customers, providing them customer care, um, handling their daily transactions, um, addressing any inquiries or questions or resolving any problems that they might have with their accounts or, or products. Um, referring the customers to the appropriate business partner for specific products and services that they might need that you've uncovered during your conversation. We do require a high school diploma or GED. Um, and the career path for this role would be moving into a lead customer service representative role or perhaps a personal banker associate one. Um, for the customer service rep role uh, for the Chicagoland area, we'd be looking to start at around $18 an hour. The retail personal banker one, um, you're spending your time, again, with customer service to our customers that come in daily. Um, you are also addressing any problems or inquiries that they might have, but you're initiating that sales process through your conversation, finding out kind of what their needs are, what products that we have, what they came in for. We do offer a 10 week onboarding program that is focused on classroom web and workshop learning. Obviously with the pandemic going on, a lot of the training is virtual. Uh, this role, you would spend half of your time in the sales aspect and the other half on the teller side. This is all based on the branch needs. Uh, if you are down some employees, maybe they're on vacation, things like that, uh, you're able to be flexible and, and work on either side. This is an entry role into the sales, a sales position and the growth potential is moving up to the second level, which is gonna be 100% sales. Uh, this role is gonna have a base salary, plus you'd be eligible for monthly, quarterly and semi-annual bonus opportunity that's based on the branch performance. We do require one to three years of sales, customer service and cash handling experience. For our Chicagoland area, uh, we start this role between $21.75 an hour to $22.85 an hour. Uh, some other positions, again, I mentioned the personal banker too, a sales position that's a primary focus on sales development and relationship building that does require two to five years of sales and customer service experience. You can grow into a financial center manager role or a preferred relationship manager or an investment executive. Um, role. The financial center manager associate is the first step to get into a financial center manager role. You would go through our training program for that um, and you'd be responsible for coaching and developing your employees and also responsible for sales generation on both inside and outside of the bank. We do require five years in a leadership role for that position, uh, preferably in the financial industry, but we do consider other sales industries uh, for that position. Our application process, um, all candidates would need to formally apply at our careers site. 
uh, we would review your application and follow up with you to make sure that you meet the minimum requirements of the role. The first step is a phone interview with one of our recruiters. The second step is either a phone or in-person interview with um, our management team. So either a financial center manager um, and a, a regional manager, and then all follow-up communication comes from our recruitment team. And most of our branch positions do require a full FBI fingerprint check credit check and a drug screen test post offer. Uh, we're looking for candidates who embrace and drive change, ensure high levels of performance, um, encourage and promote teamwork and collaboration. That one couldn't be more important than it, it, teamwork and collaboration is one of the biggest things that we really look for and it's needed in, in this type of role um, that we have available. Uh, we do have great benefits. So our 401k is very competitive. It's a great 401k plan. Um, we do include medical, dental, vision, disability, life, and some other options as well. Uh, we have paid parental bonding leave, um, flexible spending accounts, paid vacations, holidays, um, educational assistance. We have wellness awards or rewards. Um, so there's just a lot of uh, benefit options that we do offer. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you for that presentation, Heather. And I just do want to reiterate, again, if you do have any questions for Heather regarding employment with Fifth Third Bank, please feel free to enter those questions into the chat. and We'll get those answered for you during our Q&A session that will be taking place after all employers have presented. Thank you, Heather. Our next presenter will be a beer with Finkel Steel. A beer, are you available to present? I am. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, so we, we can go ahead and get started with Tinkle. So I'm Abir Frederick. I'm the Senior HR Generalist at Tinkle. Um, and I'll be talking to you guys a little bit about the manufacturing roles we have available. You can go to the next slide. So Tinkle has been around for over 100 years. We're located on the south side of Chicago now. We originally were on the north side up on Goose Island. Um, we transitioned uh, to the south side for more growth and more expansion. So we've been on the south side for about seven years. Uh, Finkel is the world's leading supplier of forged and dyed steels, uh, plastic molds, castings, and lots of other steel products. <laughs> Our products are manufactured at four main facilities, our Chicago location, which is our largest, Detroit, Houston, and Quebec. With more than 100 patents, Finkel sets the worldwide standards, including being the first steel manufacturer in, in America to receive a iOS 9001 certification. So super exciting stuff. Um, next slide, please. So the four positions I'm going to talk about today are going to be our machine operator position, our forge helper, and our melt shop helper. So our machine operator position, we actually have um, over 20 roles available uh, for that one. Forge helper and melt shop helper, we have two positions each, and then our maintenance mechanics. Um, just throwing that out there in case anyone does have maintenance experience, we have two roles available there as well. Uh, next slide. So for all of our positions, we do uh, require some manufacturing or operations experience. Um, definitely a plus if it's in the heavy metal or steel industry. Um, our requirement is our, you must work weekends and overtime. You must be able to lift 50 pounds on a regular basis and stand for a minimum of eight hours. You must be able to effectively communicate written and verbally. Uh, you must be able to work in a loud, dusty, non-climate control environment. And is it steel mill? It gets pretty dirty. Um, and with Chicago's weather, it can get really cold in there and I can also get really hot. Um, especially in the forge and melt shop, you definitely need to be able to um, tolerate radiant heat and um, withstand some heat pressure. We do also require a high school diploma or GED. And for all our positions at Finkel, we are a second chance employer as well. So flexible on background. Uh, next slide. So I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about what each of those positions kind of entail. <clears throat> Our machine operator would be involved in lifting, hooking and unhooking the change or chains around the steel pieces, assisting in 
um, loading and unloading the machine with large steel pieces using cranes, saw blading and using the saw blade um, abiding, of course, by all company safety policies and procedures, accurately measuring uh, straight and circular dimension of forged steel, uh, recording on paper and electronic um, any measurements, process times, and operational activities, perform pre-operational checks on machines and lifting, uh, utilize correct lifting practices, of course, and effectively communicate with teammates um, re regarding the flow, maintenance activity, and safety topics. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> Our fourth stop helper, very similar, lifting and hooking um, and unhooking change around uh, the steel pieces, operating of overhead cranes related to our, all forging activities, sweeping, shoveling, and general housekeeping, assisting in loading and unloading the machine with steel pieces. Um, you also will be trained here on all forging equipment to one day be able to kind of move into that next position um, to forge the steel. And of course, safety, um, following all safety procedures. Next slide. Melt shop helper, uh, you will be using a forklift in this role. Um, you know, operating overhead cranes is also a main aspect here. You'll be using various tools to help with the melting process um, and uh, performing general housekeeping. And of course, uh, communication with the team is also important there. Next slide. So some of our perks um, and benefits. Uh, so we do have overtime available um, starting after eight hours of any shift. Um, so you work eight hours. Uh, after that, it's considered overtime. And all Saturday is overtime as well. Double time on Sundays. We have a second and third shift, shift differential payout. We offer weekly pay. You are a part of the union after 90 days. Uh, quarterly game sharing bonus. Um, we offer health and dental benefits through Blue Cross and Blue Shield. We offer 401k, spending, a flex spending account, holiday pay as well. Um, since we are a union shop, our salaries are already predetermined based off the contract. So for our machine shop, it starts at $16 an hour. Our forge shop helper starts at $17.50 an hour. And our milk shop helper is $17.50 an hour as well. Um, for the machine shop and forge shop, after every six months, you are increased automatically 50 cents for the first, every six months for the first two years. So that's just kind of helping you work through the maintenance, um, sorry, the, the machinist trainee program there. And so automatically, no matter, as long as you're there for six months, you will automatically get increased uh, 50 cents um, for the first two years. Next slide. So if you are interested, you can apply online at finkel.com. You could also reach out to me directly. I'm the senior HR generalist, once again, or my colleague, Alex Pinner, um, who is also another HR generalist. But we will receive all the applications through Finkel Steel, and then we will, I'm sorry, through the Finkel website, and then we will follow up with you directly from there. Fantastic. Thank you for your presentation, Abir. And again, I yeah. uh, just want to reiterate, if you do have any questions for a beer regarding employment with Finkel Steel, please feel free to enter those into the chat. And again, we'll get those answered for you during the Q&A session that'll be taking place after all employers have presented. Thank you, Abir. Our next presenter will be Jennifer with GCJ Hospitality. Jennifer, are you available to present? Yes, I am. Fantastic. You can begin whenever you're ready. Great, thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer Hunter. I am the owner um, and the managing director for GCJ Hospitality Resources. You can go to the next slide. Um, just a little bit quick, quick brief history about us. We are a full service hospitality consulting agency. We're um, located here in Chicago. We have staffing solutions for convention trade shows and special events. Um, with the pandemic at this moment, we are pretty much starting to gear up for events that are upcoming for the fall, as well as 2022 as well. So we're um, definitely looking for individuals that are um, experienced in overall customer service. You can go to the next slide. 
Um, again, our offices, our corporate offices are located in the Merchandise Mart Chicago. Um, we are on the 15th floor. We do all of the staffing for the trade shows and events that are happening within the Merchandise Mart Chicago. Um, again, we're starting to gear up for um, this towards the end of this year, February, part me, um, the fall of this year going into next year. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, that's me, the officer here. I'm the primary contact. I am the um, principal owner and managing director of this company. You can go to the next slide. Um, so we do have a lot of opportunities currently. We are um, always looking for qualified candidates. Most importantly now, we do have a few roles for a virtual administrative assistant. Um, we do have COVID ambassadors that are throughout the city of Chicago that are responsible for distributing PPE products. We have temperature takers at different locations throughout the city, crowd control, things of that nature now while we are in the middle of this pandemic. Um, we're also gearing up for our summer um, events. So we need a lot of bartenders. You must be Bassett certified, um, 21 years of age or older. We're looking for banquet service as well. Um, and as we start to move in towards our fall and events are back up and running, we are looking for promotional staff. So brand ambassadors, but also within that brand ambassador role, these individual will, individuals will also be um, responsible for um, passing out that PPE um, products to individuals that are entering into events. Um, our pay rate for most of our positions are $16 to $18 per hour. Um, and it's basically based on your experience. Um, we do train internally. Um, we do a lot of virtual trainings. We also have a lot of positions that require you to work on the weekends. Um, and there's also some flexibility in some of those positions as well. I highly encourage you all, you can go to the next slide, um, highly encourage you to go to visit our website, which is gcjhospitality.com. You can submit your resume um, and we can definitely chat a little bit more about our positions that are upcoming. Okay, great to meet everyone. Thank you so much for that presentation, Jennifer. And again, I just want to reiterate, if you do have any questions for Jennifer regarding employment with GCJ, uh, please feel free to enter those questions into the chat and we'll get those answered for you during our upcoming Q&A session. Thank you, Jennifer. Our next presenter will be Evia with DCFS. Evia, are you available to present? Sorry. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. You can begin whenever you're ready, Evia. Thank you. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Evie Ortega and I'm the Cook County Northern Illinois Recruiter for DCFS. Um, the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services is uh, the public social service agency that's charged with enabling families um, to ensure the safety, well-being, and permanency of the abused and neglected children in our care. Um, so basically what the top three, three things that we do is we investigate allegations of abuse and neglect of children we license daycares and we manage a foster parent program. Next slide, please. So these are just a few of the many opportunities that DCFS offers as far as our job vacancies. Um, I'm going to just go over a few of them uh, and then uh, you can refer to our website for more detailed information for the postings. And I will also send everyone that's registered for this event a follow-up email with everything you'll need to apply for the positions, where to find them, how to get career counseling, and the actual applications. Um, so our child protection specialist is our investigator. So they are usually the first on the scene when an allegation of abuse and neglect of a child is made. They are the ones that ask the questions to determine what are the next steps that need to occur um, and what is the actions that need to be implemented. Our child welfare specialists are also known as our case managers and they uh, work more hand in hand with the families ensuring that those families are receiving those resources to hopefully provide a safe environment for that child um, and maintain their unit as a whole. And, and they also man our call centers. They work with in-tech and permanency placements um, as well. Our daycare licensing representative is the um, title that goes into the various daycares to ensure safe, safety levels and standards of care are being abided by. Um, they issue and uh, also can cancel out 
licenses if necessary. So uh, they do uh, both for um, large daycares as well as in-home daycares. Uh, we are also looking to fill child welfare nurse specialists. So that is basically registered nurses. Um, if you are a registered nurse, I know that DCFS is hiring. We have quite a few positions throughout the state. Um, we have a couple of IT positions. Um, for anyone interested, there are information systems analysts and services specialists. And then we have our public service administrator, which is a supervisor that runs a lot of our locations, um, overseeing those daycare licensing reps, uh, investigators and case managers. And then um, the option 8L, the public service minister option 8L is a supervisor over our legal teams. Uh, we are actually hiring attorneys as well, which we uh, talk, to the, talk about them as our administrative law judges um, and our uh, regular, what you call, or what you would think of when you think of an attorney. Um, we also call them technical advisors. Uh, so those are just a few of our positions, but we again have a lot of behind the scene jobs. Um, as you can tell by these titles, a lot of these require a minimum degree. Um, Typically, it's going to be a bachelor's degree in that particular field. Uh, it should be social work, criminal justice for those investigative case managers, early childhood education for those daycare licensing reps. For the nurses, you have to be a licensed registered nurse. IT, we can use uh, associate's degree level with computer science backgrounds. Um, our supervisory levels are going to require master's and above or bachelor's and above. For our Option six, supervisor, it's going to be master's in social work is preferred with five years experience in social work or investigations. Um, for those of you that are interested in working for DCFS and you're not quite at these level of degrees, know that we have a lot of behind the scene positions, things like our office staff, um, one of those titles is office associate, just require a GED high school diploma. Um, we have support service workers. They work in a lot of our warehouse um, areas and a lot of our buildings maintenance areas. Um, so that's just to name a couple. Um, and again, there's there's a lot of opportunities here. I don't want you to think that we only focus on ones that require higher levels of degrees. Next slide, please. So some of the benefits of working for a state agency is that we uh, provide employer-sponsored insurance plans from day one. You have health, dental, life, and vision. We also have flexible spending plans and commuter savings programs, um, paid vacation, personal sick and holiday time, all segregated. They're not lumped together in uh, a sum of PTOs, all different times. Um, we have a retirement savings plan and a pension plan. Um, and we have tuition reimbursement programs. And a lot of the opportunities are uh, covered under a union contract, which gives extra benefits and protections in place, as well as we have a lot of promotional opportunities, both within DCFS and between our sister agencies. Because the other benefit of working for a government agency within the state of Illinois um, system is that state of Illinois agencies are sister agencies. That means that you can work for one of us and promote to another one. And those benefits that you've been accumulating are gonna follow you around. So it opens up a whole other sphere of promotional and growth opportunities in your career. Next slide, please. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to email dcfs.employment at illinois.gov. That goes straight to the recruiters for DCFS. And if you have questions about um, any examinations that might be required for a title you're interested in or getting career counseling or further guidance for the application process, you can also reach out to CMS directly. Um, this is their phone number in Chicago. And again, I wanna reiterate that I will be sending out follow-up emails to everyone that's registered so that you will get all of the information that you'll need to get started in your job search with the state um, and especially with DCFS. Uh, but if you go to work.illinois.gov website, you will see all of the job postings on that website as well. Okay. That's the last slide for us. Fantastic, thank you for that presentation, Evia. And again, just wanna reiterate, if you do have any questions for Evia regarding employment with DCFS, Please feel free to enter those into the chat and we'll get those answered for you during Q&A. Thank you, Evia. Thank you. Our next presenter will be Megan with Northwestern Medicine. Megan, are you available to present? Yep, I'm ready. Fantastic. You can begin whenever you're ready, Megan. Perfect. Um, so welcome everyone. I'm gonna give you guys a little down low on Northwestern Medicine. Next slide. Um, so our hospital system is made up of 11 hospitals. 
um, across the Chicagoland area, obviously dedicated to providing the most advanced um, healthcare kind of um, throughout like the Chicagoland area. You can go on to the next slide. Um, our pa patient's first approach is kind of our bread and butter at Northwestern. Um, every patient interaction makes a difference in our cultivating in a positive workplace. Um, we do like to think the patient first, first approach is what sets, sets us apart as a leader in the healthcare industry. Um, as an integral part of our team, you will have the opportunity to join our quest for better healthcare, no matter where you work within the healthcare system. Next slide. Um, our mission at Northwestern is a premier integrated academic health system where the patients come first. Uh, we are all caregivers or someone who supports a caregiver. Uh, we are here to improve the health of our community. We have essential relationships with Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Uh, we integrate education and research to continually improve excellence in our clinical practices. And we serve a broad community and strive to bring the best in medicine closer to where patients live and work. Our vision at Northwestern Medicine is to be a premier integrated academic health system that will serve a broad community and will bring the best in medicine, including breakthrough treatment and clinical trials enhanced throughout our affiliation with the university and the School of Medicine. Uh, we have four large values that we pride ourselves on as well. Um, patients first, putting our patients first in everything that we do day in and day out. Integrity, which is adhering to an up, uncompromising code of ethics that emphasizes complete honesty and sincerity. Teamwork, which we start, try to strive in every department. And excellence, which is continuously striving to be better in everything that we do. Um, here's a little timeline of our evolution at Northwestern. Um, obviously, you can see that we have acquired quite um, many other health systems in the Chicagoland area. Um, just recently, our newest member is Palos Health, which was just obviously this year in 2021, about three months ago, we did acquire them. Um, so we are just continuing to grow and kind of take on other tackles throughout our growing. Um, these are just some stats to, to kind of help set us apart from other hospitals within the area. Uh, we have 11 hospitals in the Chicagoland area. Um, to go through all of these, number one, Northwestern Memorial Hospital ranked first in Illinois. Um, we are ranked number nine um, for the medical school in Chicagoland in Illinois. Um, four for hospital magnets designated. Um, and then you can see below some other numbers um, that does kind of set us apart from other healthcare systems in the Chicagoland area. And then these are some other honors and awards. I won't run through these too much, but as you can see, we do like to set ourselves apart um, from many recognitions and awards that we have earned throughout our time. Um, a couple things about NM employee benefits. Um, we are well being reimbursed um, for physical, emotional, and financial well being. Uh, we do have paid time off, obviously, um, large opportunities for career development. We do offer tuition assistance as well as student loan repayment, um, re reimbursement, professional development as well, um, 401k match, which is great employee assistance program and many others that um, we actually add to pretty much every year um, that are also great selling points for Northwestern Medicine. Um, how to apply, um, it's pretty simple. This is our jobs.nm. Um, this will take you directly to our career site. You can then from that point on filter the search results um, based on location as well as job title. At that point, you can submit an application we do recommend up to five applications at a time, no more than. Um, a recruiter will then review and be in touch with you regarding next steps. Most of our interviews at this time are being done virtual, um, but that can obviously change in the near future. And then I'll also be um, sending in the chat here another um, email that you can also use for any other questions um, that you might come 
either with positions or kind of next steps with recruiters. Um, so I'll put that in the chat if you guys do wanna jot it down um, and then feel free to also use careers at nm.org as well. And I think that's it. Fantastic, thank you so much for that presentation, Megan. And again, if you do have any questions for Megan regarding employment with Northwestern Med, please feel free to enter those into the chat. We'll get those answered for you as soon as possible. Our Thank next you so present much. Absolutely, Megan. Our next presenter will be Manny with White Castle. Manny, are you available to present? Yes. Fantastic. Let me navigate to your slides here and you can begin. Good morning, everybody. Happy birthday to us. It's our 100th birthday this year and uh, we're excited to try to uh, get more people on board to help us uh, go into the next 100 years. Next slide. A little bit about White Castle. We're family owned since 1921. We have 71 locations throughout the Chicagoland area. We promote from within. Uh, I started way back when, 30 uh, some odd years ago to uh, at White Castle as a team member and I'm a district supervisor right now. Uh, we offer weekly paychecks. Our starting pay for the locations we're looking at for today is $14 an hour. Uh, just a few of the benefits we offer is 401k, profit sharing, health, dental, and life insurance for full-time team members, free meals while working, uh, paid holidays and service bonuses, and paid vacations. Next slide. These are the five locations we're uh, looking for right now. And uh, those locations, uh, there's a general manager there and a, a contact number to contact them uh, to follow up if uh, you do pull out an application. Um, next slide. So we're hiring about three to five team members per location and job duties include customer service, cash handling, preparing and serving quality products, cleaning and sanitation and other duties as assigned. Um, expectations. What we really need are people who love to work with people. What White Castle's mission is, is to create memorable moments. So to create those memorable moments, we need those friendly team members on the front lines to make sure that we're making that best first impression. Good attendance and reliable transportation is uh, needed. Clean and professional appearance, a true passion for making customers happy. Um, and we, we wanna create memorable moments every day. Next slide. So to apply, you can either go online to careers.whitecastle.com or you can text to apply also. Text CASTLE to 56379. Search for your desired location, complete the application, and then take our assessment. Um, I would also put when you're, uh, <clears throat> while you're filling out the application, they're gonna ask how you are referred to this uh, um, job. Please put my name down in there so then they know that this was through the job fair and uh, they can pay uh, close attention to that and um, try to pull your application up and make sure that uh, we have enough, uh, if your availability and um, reliability is uh, something we can work with, then uh, we'll give you a call. And if you have any issues or questions, you can always email them to me at uh, T-H-A-K-K-A-R-M at whitecastle.com. Short and sweet. Thank you, everyone. Fantastic. Thank you for that presentation, Manny. And again, if you do have any questions for Manny regarding employment opportunities with White Castle, please feel free to enter those in the chat and we will get those addressed during our Q&A session. Our final employer today will be Arlene uh, with Amazon. Arlene, are you available to present? Hi, Daniel. I am ready. Can you hear me just fine? Absolutely, loud and clear, and your camera appears to be working well as, as well. Thank you, Arlene. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for your interest in Amazon. Um, I'm going to go ahead with the next slide, and we'll just quickly go through the overview. We'll go through introductions, why Amazon, an overview of the hourly roles and the hiring process, um, and uh, we'll go through the Q&A at the end. Um, but... Moving on, I will say that first and foremost, I am Arlene Caro. 
I'm a staffing coordinator that hires for the warehouse associates and the whole food shoppers in the Chicagoland area and northern suburbs for Amazon. Um, why Amazon, you might ask? Amazon is a global company and our mission is to become Earth's most customer-centric company. We work in teams in different warehouses across different business lines and it all comes together to deliver quality packages to customers worldwide. Our shifts start at $15 base pay and up. Some of our shifts may include a shift differential, which will range depending on the building and the shifts that you'll be working. More details to come on that. Benefits will range depending on your role type and they will be explained during your orientation. Next, we'll talk about growth at Amazon. So Amazon hourly associates are among the first are among the frontline fulfilling customers online shopping orders and can enjoy opportunities to advance within the company. I'll be able to move forward onto the next slide to speak on that growth. So now to share with you Amazon's three career advancement opportunities, we do strive to maintain an environment where people can learn, adapt, and excel. Amazon wants you to succeed in your career, even if that career is outside of Amazon. I have three options here. The first one is career choice. This is where Amazon prepays up to 95% of tuition and fees to earn certificates and associates degrees in high demand occupations, such as aircraft mechanics, technology, medical laboratory science, just to name a few. These will be updated. So I do recommend once you are an internal associate to keep track of that list because it, it is changing and offering different opportunities. The next one is career skills. Several of these programs provide a, a huge opportunity for anyone who wants any more, uh, more technical skills to move into a better paying role by providing training and industry certification needed to make that happen. And the last one we have here is Associate 2 Tech. This is only available to Fulfillment Center Associates, but it is a 90-day program that provides on-the-job IT training, regardless of their previous IT experience. Amazon school accommodations, whether it's school, another job, or just need a more flexible schedule, Amazon does offer flexible part-time or reduced time scheduling that allows the opportunity to pick up shifts that work best for you. So you will be choosing these shifts weekly through an app, and these shifts will be available at a Whole Foods or a Prime Now building, like the one that we have on Cherry Avenue in Chicago. On our next slide, we'll talk about the typical shift schedules where we offer both full-time and part-time opportunities that include morning, midday, late night, and overnight shifts. Most of our buildings are open all year. And next, probably one of our most important slides is going to be safety. The health and safety of our employees and contractors around the world continues to be our top priority as we face challenges associated with COVID-19. Leaders across Amazon are meeting every day to consider the evolving situation and are consulting with medical experts to ensure that we can and we do everything that we can to keep our teams healthy. Temperature checks are being done in the warehouses. Select warehouses have associate free on-site COVID testing. We practice social distancing, masks and gloves are required and provided in our facilities. We have enhanced our cleaning and disinfecting and we continue to review our procedures daily. Now we'll move forward with our many business lines. To start things off, delivery stations. So at the delivery stations, you will not be doing the deliveries themselves. You're actually going to be sorting, scanning, and loading customer, customers' already packaged orders to fulfill the same day and two-day shipping delivery time. So you're prepping them to get ready for the drivers to come and pick them up. Next, we have Prime Now. Prime Now is a super fast two hour or less delivery service. Enjoy the thrill of working in a small team to select and pack orders to get items ready for delivery within an hour. Since orders may include fresh or frozen items, it can be a cooler environment, but think about it as a um, grocery electronics store inside of a warehouse. Next, we have Fresh. 
Now, Fresh is our grocery delivery service. Um, this will include fresh, frozen, and packaged groceries, and you'll be provided with the right gear to work in those refriger refrigerated areas. And if this is the location that you're looking at, it will note it in the job description. And last, we have our Whole Foods Market. Shoppers in Whole Foods are using an Amazon provided device, select their items out of the aisles, package them, or message customers if re replacement items are needed, but they'll be packing those groceries for one to two hour delivery. Now, what are Amazon jobs like? Relax dress code, dress casual, safe, just make sure that you're able to move around comfortably because you will be standing, walking for four to 10 hours a day, depending on your shift. And you must be able to lift up to 49 pounds. You may need to learn how to operate powered industrial trucks, but it'll be noted in the job description um, if that's the case with your building. Uh, please note this is with or without reasonable accommodation. And last, we have our hiring process. So our hiring process usually takes two to three weeks from the moment that somebody applies. The first step is applying online and passing an online assessment. No interview. You'll receive a 30-minute virtual job preview to learn about your role at Amazon, and you'll schedule an office hours in-person appointment with us. When you come meet with us at that appointment, you'll bring proof of your identity and employment eligibility, and this is so we can process your drug tests, your background check, your I-9, and answer any questions you may have before you leave, because once you leave, you're just waiting for your day one confirmation email. Now, to get started, we'll go through that, that final slide, and I'm going to actually be also sharing this information through the chat, but you have amazon.com slash Chicago hourly jobs. I will say you will want to type it out just as it is, because that link, just like that, amazon.com slash Chicago hourly jobs will take you to the website that you're looking for. If you do see an error, just make sure that you type it out as it is, and don't add anything extra like www. It may come up as an error if you do. I do recommend signing up for our job alerts. Chicago Now 8 will be sent to the phone number 77088 so that you can receive job alerts as soon as something is available in your area. And I do recognize that these professional careers, that professional careers might be something that you're interested in, even though I'm only doing the hiring for the warehouse associates and the Whole Foods shoppers. I have provided a link here at the bottom in case you were interested um, in something in like IT management, HR. Um, it is a different process, um, but it is there for you in case you are interested in looking into that. Um, right now we are hiring. You might not see some something on the website at this moment because we have a full and packed day today. Um, but later on today, around 430, anybody that didn't attend our event, their, their shifts and their locations will be given back to the public for you to choose. So if you don't see anything now, I would say check back around 430 today to see if anything's opened up. Either way, we post up our new job opportunities every weekend. So Saturday evening or Sunday morning, you should be able to see something on our amazon.com slash Chicago hourly jobs. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation, Arlene. And again, if you do have any questions for Arlene regarding employment with Amazon, please feel free to enter those into the chat and we'll get those answered for you during Q&A. With the conclusion of Arlene's presentation, we have reached the end of all of our employer presentations, so we will now transition into that Q&A session with employers. I'm gonna lay just a few ground rules and expectations for the folks that are on the call. How we're gonna go ahead and work this is I will pull questions directly from the chat initially. I'll work my way through all those questions. Again, that's why it's so crucial that any questions you do have, you enter those into the chat so we can get those answered. In the event that we run out of questions, I will go ahead and pull uh, from some pre-prepared -pre questions, excuse me, that I have on my end. And how we'll work that if it comes to it is that I'll just work my way uh, from top to bottom uh, through today's schedule of employers. And uh, we'll just continue to repeat that process. So without further ado, we'll go ahead into the Q&A here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the first question from the chat. And this is actually going to be for Kim with the American Dental Association. Kim, 
This individual asks, if I don't have three years call center experience, but have over five years working with the public, can I still apply for the membership advisor position? I have a BA and a master's degree. Yes, it is considered customer service experience. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that, Kim. And we do have another question for you, Kim. This individual asks, is testing specialist on the website the same as assessment specialist? Yes, it is. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Kim. I don't see any other additional questions for you at this moment, so please just hang tight. I see another question in the chat here. This individual asks, is there a list of employers that I can access? Uh, yes, I'd like to give a two-part answer to that. First is that this session has been recorded and will be upload to, uploaded to the Illinois WorkNet YouTube channel later today. So you can, of course, go back and view this video and all of the employers who presented and, of course, the presentations and all of the links that are provided. Uh, the second uh, resource that I would like to note here as well is that we do have uh, that registration page for the event that is still live and all of the employers should be listed there under uh, the day two section as well. We have another question in the chat. This individual asks, will there be a rep for the Veterans Administration and Department of Human Services? Uh, I do not believe that is going to be the case. We will have a brief presentation from IDES over uh, various veteran services that are available if you want to stick around for that. Uh, I do have a question for Evia with DCFS as well that came in. This individual asks, do you hire paralegals? Yes, they're actually uh, called paralegal assistants. Um, those are the titles and we definitely use them. Excellent. Thank you, Evia. And I do have another question for you as well. That's here in the chat. This individual asks, for DCFS, how long approximately is the onboarding process? And what is the typical day for an investigative role? So for the onboarding process, it really depends on the title and the area you're applying for. Uh, fastest I've seen it go from when you actually submit your application for a vacancy to um, when you uh, begin the paperwork for onboarding. It's about two months from start to finish. Um, but, you know, it, it, again, it depends on uh, the position in the area um, for that, those different titles. Um, as far as the typical day for investigative role, um, I'm actually glad you asked that because we do have weekly presentations every Thursday from 12 to one on WebEx and all of the links are posted to all of our social media sites uh, and they will be in, the flyer will be in um, the email I'll send out, but there's one today that I'm about to go do at 12 o'clock and we actually have representatives from investigations and our permanency areas that will tell you about the day. So what to expect in those roles, what's the typical day like, and give you a chance to ask them questions as well. So if you get a chance to join us, that's going to be the best area for you to get that information. Again, it's every Thursday from 12 to 1. That's running now through the end of May. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Evia. If you can hold on for just one moment, looks like we do have some other questions for you in the chat. I just do want to pause here real briefly and reiterate for the job seekers that are on the call, if you do have any questions that you'd like to get answered from any of the employer reps here today, please enter those into the chat. And again, I'll be working my way down the list as I receive them. We'll get those answered for you. Evia, Going back to you again, uh, there's another question here in the chat. Are there positions for child welfare specialist job descriptions on the Work for Illinois website? Yes. Does this position uh, require testing or is it just a graded application? It is a graded application. So um, for those of you out there that are not familiar with the state process, some titles require a test or examination and some are based on your training and experience, meaning education levels and work history. So our child welfare specialist is actually one of the latter. So they're based on their degrees and the work history. Fantastic, thank you for that, Evia. And moving on, I do have another question here in the chat. This will be for the Comcast reps. Uh, this individual asks, good morning all. I have a question for the Comcast presenters. Would it be possible to talk with a retail store associate and a residential tech associate to get a more in-depth feel for the day-to-day -day job duties, they both interest me. 
So uh, I can speak on the retail. You know, typically, we don't, um, you know, we, we don't have the, the reps uh, speak to, to potential candidates. What I can speak to, though, you know, for, for the retail side, I definitely would recommend, you know, as I mentioned before, if you haven't visited a, an Xfinity store, to definitely uh, visit one. You can go to, you know, Xfinity.com or Google even to, to try to find a local one. Um, but, you know, we, we obviously do a really good job in, in speaking, you know, about the positions. I've been working with those, these roles for almost seven years. So not that I do the role, but I can definitely uh, uh, tell you, you know, in depth exactly what the role entails day by day. And, and Hagar, I think she can do the same with. Uh, yeah. Staff. Yeah. To add to that, um, uh, Sean, thank you. Uh, all of our positions, if once you visit our career website, they do provide a realistic job preview. So every position has a video will, it, where it will showcase specifically the day in the life of that particular role. So aside from visiting uh, the stores in person, or if you recall having a technician come into your home as, a, as the best experience, right? Uh, our website, we have phenomenal uh, opportunities for you to check out our applications and job realistic previews, which are videos attached to them. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent, thank you both, much appreciated. We do have an additional question in the chat and this will be uh, for Megan with Northwestern. This individual asks, is there a chance to be interviewed if I don't have work experience in a hospital but want to apply for patient relations positions within background uh, related to social work and community outreach? Yeah, absolutely. You do not have to have healthcare experience um, for most of our positions. Sometimes the patient facing more clinical roles, you will, um, but for a lot of them, you do not need to. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Megan. Yeah, of course. And it should say on the uh, qualifications on our career site, exactly the requirements, and it will list if you need, you know, specific requirements even to get an interview. Excellent. Thank you for that. We do have an additional question here in the chat. This will be for Arlene with Amazon. Arlene, this individual asks, how do you become an Amazon delivery driver? So you would want to um, check online for the delivery service. It normally is a third party, um, but I do not do the hiring for Amazon drivers. I only do the hiring for the warehouse associates and for the Whole Food shoppers. So I wouldn't be able to provide much detail into that as it's out of my scope, unfortunately. Understood. Thank you for that, Arlene. And I do have an additional question here for you. This question is, how do you apply for one of the three Amazon special programs? Yeah, so once you're an employee, um, you would want to just reach out to your HR team or your management team and ask them about uh, one of those programs. And we do have an internal website for internal associates to, um, to be able to access it as well. Um, so it'll all technically be inside of your hub under resources for internal associates. Excellent. Thank you, Arlene. Much appreciated. Again, I want to pause here for just a brief second for any of the folks who might have either missed it or just joined the session. If you do have any questions for the employer reps here today, please feel free to enter those into the chat. We'll get those answered for you as I receive them. Evia, I did receive a direct message from a job seeker. This individual asks, uh, could you please provide the link to apply? Again, I missed it by a second. I don't know if you'd be able to Enter that into the chat for folks, but that'd be fantastic. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you, Evia. The next question that I have here is for Heather uh, with Fifth Third. This individual asks, what is the usual time you've seen people advance from a CSR uh, to personal banker associate one or lead CSR? Um, yes, we do require all of our employees and new hires to be in their role for one year before they can be considered for the next level. Um, for some instances, you may get a promotion, you know, earlier than a year within your same branch facility, but we really uh, ask that you be in your role for one full year before moving up into the next level. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Heather. And I did receive an additional direct message from an individual. This individual asks, what day is the virtual chats with individual companies? 
um, to that job seeker. That session will actually be taking place tomorrow. Again, if you have not yet registered for that session, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and go back to the registration page that you use to sign up for this session. You're gonna to wanna to sign up for tomorrow's session as well. And during that session for all of the employers who will be available, uh, you will be able to meet with them uh, individually as well. Uh, the next question that I have here, looks like it's gonna be for Arlene with Amazon. Uh, this individual asks, if I worked for Amazon Fulfillment Center for a few weeks, if I apply for future roles for Amazon corporate, would I be disqualified? Um, so uh, considering that the question is uh, very specific to that individual, I wouldn't be able to answer um, anything specific to their application in the large audience setting. What I can say for a general sense for anyone that uh, might be concerned of moving forward or not or looking into a higher position, I can say that moving forward can depend on multiple factors such as business needs your contingencies, such as drug test background check, um, any issues with I-9, things like that, or the assessment score. Um, the biggest thing that we often see is that uh, the assessments, the assessment is kind of rushed. I always recommend taking your time on the assessment, um, using uh, using headphones if unable to uh, uh, unable to do the assessment in a quiet uh, a quiet room with without distractions. Um, but considering that it can depend on multiple factors, we normally send out emails letting someone know if or if they are or if they are not moving forward um, so that they can reach out to us with any questions or issues based on the reasoning. Um, but Raj, feel free to direct message me. I know I just messaged you privately, um, but I'll be happy to connect with you more offline. Awesome, thank you for that response, Arlene. Much appreciated. And Evia, back to you. It's another DCFS slash state uh, hiring related question. This individual asks, are there opportunities to apply online? And then kind of building off of that, this individual asks or stated, I noticed that most positions for the state uh, state do not apply online. I don't know if you can clarify that a little bit. Yeah, so what it is is that we're currently in the process of um, doing away with, eventually doing away with our physical applications and getting all of our um, titles to an online application process. That is still in the works. So right now what we've got uh, as far as titles that are able to allow for online applications without a physical application is uh, the ones under what we call merit comp. So those are gonna be non-unionized positions. Typically they are executive level positions, appointments, things like that. Um, all the unionized positions are still requiring uh, the CMS 100 employment application to be completed is submitted to that agency contact listed on that posted vacancy. Um, the target timeline for all of them to convert to the online process is they're looking at maybe the end of this year, beginning of next year. So for currently, that's that division. It's going to be some job titles are going to be online, and most of them are going to be um, by actual application because they are unionized positions. Understood. Thank you for that information, Evia. And I do have another question here for Heather with Fifth Third. This individual asks, uh, I missed the Fifth Third presentation. Are there any IT positions available? Um, yes, I did go onto our careers website and you can filter it by state and city. So I did filter it for Chicago. Um, there are five IT positions. Um, I don't... Uh, recruit for the IT roles, but we do have five um, positions that are, are posted out there that you can absolutely take a look at it and apply for. Fantastic, thank you for that, Heather, much appreciated. And it looks like we did receive um, another question here in the chat. This will be directed towards Megan with Northwestern. Uh, this individual states, I reviewed a few positions. Can you please provide clarification on job descriptions online? Their qualifications listed qualify me. And then the next paragraph states preferred qualification doesn't. Should I just go by the preferred? Although I have over 24 years of health insurance experience. Not sure if you can 
answer that question or not, Megan. So unfortunately, I would need the actual role because um, it, you know it's kind of hard to just go off. Most of them do go by preferred qualifications. Um, but again, it, it might ha help if I know the exact position. I do recruit for more clinical roles personally. Um, so it's not, if it's not a clinical position, I'm probably not the best go-to. Um, so maybe, you know, I would say go ahead and apply then. I don't know okay. if that helps. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Megan. Much appreciated. Yeah. And we have come to the end of our questions uh, from the job seekers. Again, if you do have any questions, enter those into the chat and we'll go ahead and get those answered for you. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and kind of pivot to some of the pre-prepared questions that I have for employers. And we will go ahead and start with a beer with Finkel Steel. A beer, the question that I have for you is, how can a candidate stand out and get an interview assuming that they're qualified for the position in which they are applying? And Abir, looks like you are unmuted. I don't know if you're able to speak, however. Sorry, can you can you hear me now? I can. Okay. Uh, do you need so, me to read uh, the question once more? Or are you good? Yeah, okay. can you go ahead and repeat it for me, please? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. The question is, how can a candidate stand out and get an interview assuming they are qualified for the position in which they are applying? I think the best way to stand out in the interview would uh, really just be excited about the role. I know it's probably not the most glamorous role to work in a steel mill, but somebody who's just super excited wanting to build a career um, at Finkel and with us, you know, it's definitely a place you can go and, you know, earn more money and support your family and all those things and just really just show your excitement for wanting to build your career there. Understood. Thank you for that, Abir. And I will go ahead and ask that same question for Jennifer with GCJ Hospitality. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Absolutely. The question is, how can a candidate stand out and get an interview, assuming they are qualified for the position in which they are applying? Um, yes, definitely. They can stand out by contacting us um, and just making sure that they do have the um, background that we're looking for. Um, it's very customer service related. Um, if anyone has any other questions, they can just give me a call or go to our website directly. Excellent. Thank you for that, Jennifer. No problem. And the same question I will pose to uh, Manny with White Castle as well. Manny, how can a candidate stand out and get an interview, assuming they are qualified for the position which they are applying? I think it's always about the, um, the personality that you bring to the, to the job because um, this is a job that you're dealing with uh, people at all times and we need, to, we need those friendly, smiling faces and people who kind of bring that forward in the interviews are usually typically the ones that it comes natural to and um, those are the type of team members we're looking for. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Manny. Much appreciated. I did get a few additional questions here in the chat. Um, Heather, this question will be for you. This individual asked, what does the CSR position start at comp compensation-wise? I do believe you covered that in the presentation. Yes, that would be um, $18 an hour. Fantastic. And Heather, while I have you on the line, I did get another question for you. Uh, this individual asks, for the bank positions, what do they look for in a credit check? Um, so I, unfortunately, they, we don't disclose that information, but uh, I can just say briefly, I'm sure they're, they're checking for like bankruptcies and um, tax liens and collection items, but I don't know the exact uh, things that they look for. They actually don't let us know. We have another department that reviews that um, for our, uh, for, you know, that they look for in that. Sorry, it's, I, I wish I had a better answer, but I unfortunately do not. <laughs> no worries. Thank you for that, Heather. Appreciated. Uh, we do have another question that I received, and this was as a direct message. Megan with Northwestern, uh, I don't know if you feel comfortable doing so, but if you could please provide your contact info in the chat, I did get a request for it. 
and if not your uh, direct contact info, wherever uh, job seeker questions can be directed to would work as well. Yeah, so the one that I presented on the slideshow, the careers, mm -hmm. and I also linked one in the chat. Um, those are going to be where you're going to, you're probably going to just scroll up a bunch now, but we actually don't give out personal information on these just because as you can imagine, that gets kind of chaotic. Understood. Thank you for yes. that, Megan. Yeah, of course. And I, I can re put it in the chat, um, but it's going to be recruitment at nm.org. Okay. Yeah. If you could go ahead and throw that in the chat, that would be yeah, great. Of course. Thank you, Megan. And I did receive another question here in the chat. I'm assuming this might be directed towards uh, DCFS, but of course, if there are any other employers on the line in which this question would apply, please feel free to unmute yourself and answer this as well. Uh, this individual asks, are there any paralegal jobs available or entry level in your legal department, document clerk, et cetera? A definitely paralegal assistant. And then they also utilize uh, throughout the various departments under DCFS, uh, office associates. So you could come in as an office associate assisting a paralegal, um, but definitely paralegal assistant is one of the, the ones in the legal department that would probably interest you most. Fantastic. Thank you, Evia. And I don't know if any of the other employers on the line, if that would be applicable to your organization or not, but if so, please feel free to unmute yourself and answer that question as well. Give it a moment here. I'm assuming that's not the case. So we'll go ahead and move on. I got another question uh, for the Finkel representative. This individual asks, can you please expound on the maintenance mechanic role? I know you had a slide uh, that discussed that, but perhaps Abir, you could just real briefly touch upon that once more. Yeah, of course. I actually didn't have a slide on it because um, I, I didn't know if anybody would be interested in the maintenance mechanic role. But um, so we actually have two positions available for the mechanic position. So we have a mechanic level three role, which does require a little bit more experience and starts at $26 an hour. Um, and then that role does require some heavy industry um, experience. Steel manufacturing is a plus, but um, in in terms of what we're looking for for background, just like repairing mechanical equipment, um, any experience with repairing overhead cranes or large stationary equipment, uh, large mobile equipment. Um, but we'll only be doing a lot of diagnostic, uh, just kind of troubleshooting and looking for ways to solve problems in terms of all of our machinery. So that's the mechanic level three, definitely a little bit more experience. Um, and then our mechanic trainee position is somebody who might have gone to school or a uh, trade program um, in any way that kind of is looking to get into manufacturing, looking to get into a mechanic role, but just hasn't really found one. That one is probably paying significantly less than the $26 an hour, but definitely a position where you will be highly valued as well as have like really good job security. You know, people are holding on to mechanics as tightly as they can right now. So hopefully that helps. Fantastic, thank you, Abir. And Abir, while we still have you on the line, I did receive another question. This individual asked, will someone who had prior steel mill manual experience be preferred? Um, for the mechanic role specifically, yes. But for any of the other roles, no, it's not. That a I mean, I mean, of course, if you have that experience, it's definitely going to put you ahead of the game, but it's not a requirement or a preferred skill. Like, it's just a, a nice to have. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Abir. And I did receive another question in the chat. This will be for um, Megan with Northwestern Med. This individual asks, uh, not sure if it was mentioned, but is there medical assistant jobs available at Northwestern? I don't know, we might have lost Megan here. Uh, so she does rejoin the session. We will make sure to get that question answered. In the meantime, I'd like to ask a question that will be posed to all of the remaining reps still on the call. The question is... So sorry about that. My Wi-Fi was just spotty. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no worries, Megan. Did you hear the question that I asked? I did not. Do you mind restating it? Yeah, no worries. 
the question is, are there medical administrative assistant positions available at Northwestern? And is this the job title that I should look for that under? Or what job title, if you have something similar, should that person search for? So we have medical assistant positions. I have never seen medical, medical administrative assistants positions, to be honest. So I would search for a medical assistant. I don't know if that helps. No, absolutely it does. Thank you, Megan, much appreciated. Of course. Uh, the next question that we're gonna go ahead and transition to here as we kind of begin the wrap up of our Q&A here today, this is gonna be posed for all of the remaining employer reps on the call. And this is a question that I like to ask on all my events. Question is, what are the opportunities for advancement within your organization? And are there any success stories that you would like to highlight for the folks who are on the call here today? I don't believe that we have Amazon on the line anymore. Um, so we will start with the American Dental Association. Uh, Kim, can you answer that question, please? I can. So I can tell you that our positions are very specialized. Um, there are room for um, growth. We promote career growth and development at the ADA. And we also have uh, meetings. We also make sure that the hiring managers have meetings with their employees to talk about where they want to go and where they want to grow. So we do promote that. Um, I can't remember the second question, uh, Daniel. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, no worries, Kim. Uh, the second part of the question was, are there any particular success stories that you would like to highlight for the folks that are on the call? Oh, I would love to highlight um, Darshan Patel, um, who is my manager. I don't know if she's still on or not. Um, she started with the ADA about 20 years ago. Um, and she started off, I believe, as an HR assistant. And uh, now she um, has grown to several different um, opportunities within HR. And now she's a senior manager. Um, I have a success story myself. I worked as a temp at the ADA um, while they were waiting for their person to come on board. Uh, the person came on board. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't a good fit for him. He decided to move on to something else. Um, I immediately applied and was able to get into the ADA. The ADA is a great place to work. We have great work-life balance. We work 37 and a half hour work weeks. Um, and they, we are also member centered, but we're also employee centered as well. So um, it's just a great place to work. Fantastic, thank you for that, Kim. And we will move to our next presenter. Same question, this will be for Sean at Comcast. Sean, what are the opportunities for advancement at Comcast? And are there any particular success stories that you'd like to highlight? Sorry, I'm here. I'll uh, really quickly go over the retail um, uh, and then uh, Pagar has anything to add, but you know, overall, um, yeah, success stories and, and, and advancement within retail, you can potentially advance within retail um, every six months if you wanted to. Um, and we've had that, I can count, you know, at least on one hand, if not two, the amount of individuals who start as a part-time sales or part-time store service associate and, and end up um, as assistant store managers within a year um, or, or, you know, a year and a half. So it happens constantly. Um, so that definitely the ability to grow within retail, but, you know, even outside retail. Um, and I am constantly, like I said, as far as success stories, constantly, constantly seeing um, those, those individuals move up to assistant managers. Hagar, I don't know if you have anything to add. Sorry. Yes, it's a it's the same same as what Sean mentioned. Our progression paths are different from different roles here at Comcast, specifically for the residential technicians. They do have proficiency tests, so they're assessed by based on how well they're able to do the initial job at their initial level. Um, but that is definitely almost case by case. But there is a progression path, and within it, every progression path, there is a pay increase. So it's another phenomenal opportunity. Fantastic. Thank you, Sean, and thank you, Hagar. Much appreciated. Uh, Heather with Fifth Third, would you like to answer that question as well? Opportunities for advancement at Fifth Third and any success stories from uh, the yes. folks that you'd like to mention? Of course. Um, you know, like I had mentioned on the slideshow, you know, starting 
at an entry level teller or banker role definitely opens up the opportunity for you to not only possibly move into like a manager role at a branch, but you could also move into different areas of the bank. Uh, maybe you're going to school and you are interested in marketing or human resources or even move into the operation side. Maybe, you know, you did the sales aspect for a little bit, but you feel more comfortable in the back office. Uh, we definitely encourage and help our employees to get the proper career path from their managers to um, make that step in their career. Um, a success story that I know of, one of my colleagues is a talent acquisition uh, uh, consultant, but she actually has been with Fifth Third Bank for almost 30 years. She started off as a teller and worked her way through, you know, the branch up to a financial center manager and has moved into um, a talent acquisition consultant role. So I think that's a pretty um, big success story, Move, you know, starting at an entry level role and, and working up into the corporate office. Awesome. Thank you for that, Heather. And Abir, the same question for you as well. Yeah, so a couple of points I want to make. Yes, there's definitely areas um, of advancement, especially in a union facility. The way it works is you kind of face off seniority and you bid into different jobs as they become available. I will add that, you know, manufacturing is a more aging workforce right now. So we've had people there that have been there. 40 plus years, so Spinkel is an over 150 year company. So as those uh, individuals start to retire, more and more roles will begin to open up and more and more positions will be able to be bid in by the entry level position. So that's really exciting, you know, kind of seeing people grow into different opportunities. We have several success stories at Spinkel, not only on, you know, the you know, bidding into different positions, but also moving into more supervisory positions. We have people moving into foreman positions. Um, you know, just recently we've had somebody who's been there for years. He's done an awesome job. He's gotten raises, bid into different positions. And as a supervisor position became available, you know, he was the first in line to get that position and sound making, you know, a, a significant um, amount more and has a great story to tell. So, you know, definitely lots of opportunity for advancement at Finkel. If you want to put in the time and the energy, um, it's definitely a great place. Awesome. Thank you, Abir. Same question goes to Jennifer at GCJ. Jennifer, what are the opportunities for advancement within your organization? Yes, we definitely have um, lots of opportunities for advancement. Um, one person, well, a few people stand out that actually are currently working with us. Um, one individual started in a customer service role. Um, she stayed in that role pretty much for about one year. Um, and now she is working in our corporate offices. She is in a management position in our corporate offices. So there's definitely um, room for growth um, just with hard work and just showing that um, you're interested in continuing on um, and progressing. We definitely have opportunities. Awesome. Thank you for that, Jennifer. No problem. I don't believe we have DCFS on the line anymore. I believe she had to leave to lead her workshop. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go to Megan with Northwestern Med. Megan, what are the opportunities for advancements at your organization? Yeah, um, we do um, require a one year um, commitment to any department, both clinical and non, um, before transferring within Northwestern. Um, so that is one kind of thing to kind of keep in mind um, throughout your application process. Um, after the one-year mark, though, the room for growth is great, um, both clinical and non. Um, we have a lot of, obviously, like new grads that come to Northwestern Medicine that have kind of evolved their whole career um, with us. So great place to kind of start. And we have people that have never left. Um, so it's a great place to kind of put your roots and um, grow from within. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Megan. And last but not least, we have our final employer, uh, Manny with White Castle. Can you answer that question as well? What are the opportunities for advancement uh, within your organization? Definitely. Um, there's a lot of room for growth in our, in our industry and in our company. Um, 
You know, we have people who have advanced from a team member to a manager within a, a matter of a couple months with uh, the right motivation and the right um, demeanor. Uh, anything is possible. I mean, I've been here for 34 years and I started off as a team, a high school team member. And, um, you know, I'm a district supervisor and even our senior vice president of uh, restaurant operations, he's, uh, he started as a team member way back when as well. So there's definitely room for um, advancement. Uh, there's always room for growth in our company. And, you know, most of our, uh, pretty much every single one of our general managers that works in our 71 locations started as a team member. And some have uh, gone up the ranks pretty quickly within a matter of year to two years to becoming a general manager. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Manny. And with Manny's response there, we're going to go ahead and wrap up our Q&A session for today. Uh, there is one question that I did receive from a job seeker that I did want to elaborate on for all the folks that are still on the call or who will be tuning in at a later date. Uh, this session has been recorded, and once we conclude today, I will be uploading it to the Illinois WorkNet YouTube channel. Of course, you can go back to this video and reference all the presentations here today, all of the links that employers provided for job application opportunities, of course, all of the responses to the great questions that we had here today. Again, if you're having trouble finding that, you're just going to want to literally put into the search field, if you will, uh, Illinois WorkNet. Once you go onto our channel, there will be a playlist that will be titled Virtual Job Fairs. You'll click on that. And all of the sessions for this week's event uh, will be uploaded there by the end of this week. So just wanted to let you all know that. Additionally, we will also be putting um, a link from that, the video on our YouTube channel to each of the employer booths for all of the participating employers who uh, have participated you know, over the course of this week's events as well. So wanted all the job seekers to be aware of that and how to access that information as well. Uh, to all the employers, again, thank you all for your presentations. Uh, we will be moving on to uh, a few partner presentations that we have here today. So if you folks have to log off for additional things, uh, you can do so now. Thank you all so much for your participation today. Moving on, uh, we will have a presentation from the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership. Uh, Dave Swanson will be giving that presentation. Dave, are you available to present? Hi, Daniel, I sure am. So uh, let me, uh, oh, it looks like you've got the, uh, the presentation all set up already. Absolutely, you can begin whenever you're ready, Dave. Okay, great. Uh, well, I'm Dave Swanson and uh, I am from an agency called the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership. Uh, so we are the local workforce development system for Cook County. Um, whether you're listening to this uh, webinar um, or job fair as an employer or as a job seeker, uh, we are the system that tries to bring the two of you together. Uh, so we do things uh, like this virtual event, but there is a whole lot more that we do as a workforce development system. So this is kind of an introduction to the things that are out there, uh, both for you as a job seeker, um, but also for the employers on the call. There are a lot of ways that you can uh, take advantage of our business services to uh, recruit uh, skilled talent and uh, train uh, even the folks that you have in the company. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so uh, most people don't know that the workforce development system exists. Um, usually it's not something you hear about too much unless you get uh, laid off um, from a job. Um, at that time, if you go to the unemployment office, uh, then you'll probably be presented with workforce uh, programs for you to join. Uh, you know, we're the folks that are always encouraging you to get together with a career coach from our system and uh, see what your uh, career opportunities are. Uh, we're the ones who know where the jobs are. Uh, we know what industries are growing in the Chicago area. And in fact, we fund a network of over 90 different agencies throughout Chicago and Cook County that do employment and training related uh, uh, programs. So uh, some of those are called American Job Centers. That's at the top of the list on this slide. The AJC's American Job Centers are the one-stop locations where you can walk in and it's a one-stop shop for everything related to your personal workforce development, but also it has a business-facing staff. So it has people at that location who are making connections with the companies in the area that are hiring. 
uh, and I am from the business facing side of, of my agency. So we, we have those two customers that we serve, the employers out there and the job seekers that are out there. Uh, there are 10 American job centers throughout Cook County. Uh, you can find out where those job centers are and you can walk into them anytime, especially when there's not a global pandemic going on. You can walk right into those offices. Uh, most of them are not physically open at full capacity right now, but we are expecting them to reopen very soon. And we are doing all of our normal operations uh, uh, virtually. So that includes these job fairs. We used to do these job fairs physically, but we've had great success uh, thanks to uh, Daniel and the folks at SIU and all the other uh, players in our system uh, at, at running these type of uh, events. Uh, so we do have a bunch of different kinds of agencies. Uh, we do a lot of work with youth, uh, people who just graduated high school or maybe who didn't graduate high school, but they're kind of out there and uh, would benefit from uh, some kind of a directed job training, not necessarily college per se, but you know some kind of job skills training to get them into a career and get them uh, on a path that's going to, uh, you know, help them support a family in the future or do what they want to do in life uh, by building their skills on the job. Uh, so we have uh, sector centers that specialize in particular industries. Uh, we have uh, the hospitality and retail uh, sector center. We have uh, the information technology sector center. We have a transportation distribution and logistics. And finally, we have a healthcare sector center. Uh, these are uh, locations that are staffed with people who know all about those particular industries. And if you want to uh, recruit people uh, for, your, for your hospital or your uh, office, or your, if you're a manufacturer uh, for your company, you can go to those sector centers and they will help you tap into our system and get uh, folks from graduating from our training programs. All right, so uh, there's a lot of different ways that we work, uh, but I'm gonna just keep moving through the, the presentation uh, just to give you a flavor of it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so as I said, over 90 agencies throughout Cook County, uh, these are all of them, including those 10 American job centers. Uh, you can see we're kind of spread out uh, across the area in the shape of Cook County. And we particularly try to work with communities and we're mandated to work with communities that are facing barriers to employment. Uh, so these might be, well, there's so many barriers to employment for individuals looking for jobs. There might be transportation problems. Uh, there might be uh, just a, a lack of exposure or education in the industry that they're uh, interested in getting into. And that's what our system is, is designed to help out with. Uh, we are a nonprofit. So we are the government, but we're also a nonprofit. Um, and that's a little bit of an unusual structure but there are more government nonprofits nowadays. And the great thing about being a non-for-profit is that although we are using taxpayer dollars uh, to provide services to the public, uh, we uh, are also able to take private dollars uh, and grants from all kinds of foundations that want to support workforce development. So uh, being a nonprofit helps us do it all and, and reach an even wider audience. Next slide, please. All right, so I'm gonna start um, moving faster because uh, I see that the time uh, horizon is approaching. So uh, yeah, if you could just click all, one more click, Daniel, and we'll get the full slide here. There you go. All right, so that's our whole system. We serve the job seeker on the upper left. We serve the employer. I'm on the business services team. Uh, we fund training providers and we have career coaches. These are people who can help individual job seekers develop a plan, develop their resume, do workshops, do whatever they need to put them on that career path. Next slide, please. Uh, I saw a question in the chat. Are there agencies on the Southeast side of Chicago for workforce resources? Absolutely. Uh, we have uh, agencies, uh, we opened just, we just opened up uh, a workforce center in Chatham, which is maybe not exactly Southeast, but it's, it's South and it serves the Southeast facing area of Chicago. And then if you're curious, if you do live over by Indiana, every state and every county in the country has the same workforce system. So even North, uh, Northwest Indiana has the same workforce system. It's called Work One out there, but it is the same WIOA funded system that, that I'm presenting to you today. So we, we cover everything here. Um, if you're curious about that, just type in uh, Chatham. Um, we can, I can paste a link into the chat to get you that, that um, information about the new center in Chatham. Uh, 
in just a in just a couple minutes. Uh, you can see that we channel a lot of funds um, from the government and from various sources uh, to help all different groups of people. We're helping out with the contact tracing. We're actually the agency designated to hire the contact tracers for Chicago. So uh, when it comes to uh, doing large scale hiring, um, we are an agency that that a lot of different groups will call on. Next slide, please. All right, um, and I'm gonna start going even faster here, uh, but this is showing you the way that we spend our money because this is public money. Um, we, it's, it's as transparent as we can make it. Uh, mostly we provide vouchers to individuals so that they can go seek training at one of our training providers. Uh, and you can see where it says individual training account volume by sector, that's just our way of saying uh, what do we spend our money? What kind of, how do we spend our training dollars? Um, we spend a lot of it on TDL, that big orange part. That's truck driving. That's um, most of that is actually people getting their CDL licenses because that ends up being a popular way um, for individuals to jump into a new career or advance their career. But obviously we, we follow the needs of the economy and the needs of the individual. We do a lot of IT training, manufacturing training, healthcare training for a huge variety of different careers. Next slide, please. Uh, here's the variety. Uh, you know, in, in different workforce areas in the country, they might have certain industries that are growing, but here in the Chicagoland area, there it's pretty much all the industries have, have great opportunities. These are the ones we work with and it, it's pretty much everything. Um, business, professional services, healthcare. We know retail, culinary, and hospitality has been hit very hard. Everybody knows during the pandemic. But coming back, it's showing signs of life and we are gonna be right there uh, trying to help these businesses um, and these job seekers get reconnected and hopefully build it back even stronger than before. Next slide, please. Um, this one I'm just gonna skip. It's just a, it's a bunch of data showing us that yes, we met our goals. <laughs> we are an agency that meets its goals from the government. Um, we have great job placement rates uh, for a workforce development system. Next slide, please. Uh, again, this is this is kind of who we serve, uh, community impact. It's a lot of numbers on the screen. If I had more time, I would uh, jump into it. Uh, but uh, I think the main take home point here is that uh, we're a big system. Um, we're a big system. In, in fact, we are the largest workforce development system in the country by some measures here in Cook County. Um, so whatever you need related to employment and training, uh, you can find through us. Um, just uh, talk to me, talk to someone in our system, visit our website, shycookworks.org uh, to get connected. Next slide, please. Uh, meeting employer need, uh, this is the business facing aspect of our agency. Uh, we help businesses uh, understand state and local tax incentives. We help them train their uh, employees with grants. We help them hire employees and we can offset the wages for the first few months uh, if there's a training program at the business. And uh, we also do uh, kind of just consultation work with businesses um, related to meeting their labor needs. Uh, so please do reach out to us if you are a business interested in those kind of services. Next slide, please. All right, um, we uh, also have a large network uh, built by our career coaches and our job developers uh, related to uh, on the job training and job placement. So this is just some numbers uh, related to uh, what we've done, uh, what we've done since it was from July 2019 to June 30th, 2020. Um, you know, it's we, we do a lot. We, we help thousands of people with training and with placement. Next slide. Uh, some other features of the system, uh, the contact tracing. And I see there's a question in the chat about uh, contact tracing. Um, I can, that looks like more of a uh, individual level question. So I will, I'll be happy to talk to you about that. Um, after my presentation. Uh, we were designated uh, to work with the Chicago Public, uh, Department of Public Health to hire the contact tracers, and now we are also getting involved in um, providing vaccines to everyone in the city. Uh, racial equity response teams. Uh, this is a, a new development, uh, but we are certainly very focused on the neighborhoods that have been most impacted by the pandemic, including the populations disproportionately affected by the pandemic. Um, uh, racial equity uh, response teams. Uh, rapid response business support. 
Uh, we are also the agency that sends out the teams to companies who are laying off workers. Uh, so if you've had to notify the state that you have to do a large layoff, we are the ones you can request to come out and talk to your workers and tell them uh, how to get connected to our system and how to uh, get the support they need to get to their next um, stage in their career. Um, all right, and we'll go to the next slide, please. I'm trying to move very fast here. Uh, we uh, work with the CHA. We have resident employment services. That's a, a whole department uh, of our agency. Uh, so we are helping people uh, get the education and the, the digital literacy that they need nowadays uh, to move into the workforce uh, for the first time or for the first time in, in a while for them. Um, we uh, try to work even with uh, your more high skilled uh, type positions like uh, computer programming. Uh, we have a 10 week coding boot camp uh, called Chicago Codes uh, that is really focused on uh, providing that kind of training uh, to folks who don't necessarily see as many opportunities come their way for that kind of training. There's, a, there's some major um, uh, inequities in, in that field and we're really trying to address that. Uh, we have the Construction Works program. Uh, we are working with hiring uh, people for the city and the county's construction needs. Um, there's the toll, tollway project, uh, and we've been contracted to help with that hiring as well. Uh, next slide, and I think it's the last slide, um, almost second to last slide. Uh, there uh, are a variety of programs that we run, and you can Google these if you want. Uh, Road Trip Nation is a really exciting one. It's a really well-produced uh, uh, documentary that you can view on uh, the, the journeys of some particular youth uh, on their career and the way that they've interacted with our system. So I encourage you to check that link out. Uh, the Opportunity Works program is funded by Cook County. And uh, that is something that, that it, it is providing internships to young people across Cook County in, into jobs in manufacturing and other areas. Uh, where they can get some work experience and see what the world of work is really like. And then hopefully that will lead to an opportunity. So that's been a very successful program for us. We also work with uh, older populations. Back to Work 50 Plus is for unemployed and underemployed people uh, age 50 and up. Uh, so there are a lot of specific things about today's job market uh, that uh, we can show people in this program so that they can feel a lot more confident about getting into the work field again. Um, and we host job clubs as well. Next slide. Lastly, that Chatham Education and Workforce Center. Uh, that's the newest center that we've opened up in the Chatham neighborhood. And uh, we are running a variety of programs out of it. So I am gonna provide uh, to the person in the chat who is wondering where that is. I will provide that as soon as I'm done talking here. Uh, but we're all very excited about that because it's been years in the, in the making to open this center. Uh, next slide. Oh, wow, there's a lot of slides in this deck. All right, um, so uh, we, uh, you know, we're, we're just, we're a government system. Um, we uh, run the Workforce Innovation Board, uh, which is required by the WIOA legislation uh, to uh, be put in place for Cook County for this area. And that's open to the public. Uh, you can tune into these anytime. I don't know, uh, I'm sure most people have not thought of tuning into that, but um, it really gives you an idea of how uh, uh, government works and how tax dollars are uh, being utilized to, uh, to help people advance their careers. Um, next slide. Okay, I think that is for someone else, someone from IDES. So thank you very much for your time and I'll let the next presenter go. Fantastic. Thank you again for your presentation, Dave, and thank you for being so flexible and adaptable. Much appreciated. And I just do want to state, um, again, if you do have any direct questions for Dave regarding anything he covered during his presentation, please feel free to enter those into the chat. Sounds like he'll be sticking around to uh, answer some of those questions uh, as best as he can. Thank you so much, Dave. Much appreciated. And our final presenter for today will be Marlena with IDES. She will be giving a brief presentation over resources that are available to veterans and spouses. Marlena, are you available to present? Yes, I'm here. Fantastic. You can begin whenever you're ready. Uh, next slide, please. 
My name is Marlena Raglan. I am a DVOP, which is an acronym for Disabled Veteran Outreach Program Specialist. Do not let the disabled in my title discourage you. The disabled actually refers to my status as a disabled veteran, not necessarily um, the individual veterans that we work with. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. I am a medically retired Army veteran with over 16 years of service. Um, I'm sorry, I can't see the slide. Okay, so here you see my acronym as well as LVER. The LVER stands for Local Veteran Employment Representative. Statewide, Illinois is authorized 22 DVOPs and 18 leavers. We are considered JVSG staff. JVSG stands for Jobs for Veterans for State Grants under the umbrella of, as you can see, IDES, Illinois Department of Employment Security. Next slide, please. Here we're talking about, <coughs> excuse me, lever and uh, DVOP education and experience. Essentially you require, in, in order to be hired, uh, by the state of Illinois as a DVOP or a lever. The DVOP and the lever require knowledge, skill, and mental development equivalent to the completion of four years of college with courses in social or behavioral sciences, business administration, or marketing. This position, although it says, it says must be honorably discharged, that's not exactly correct. Um, if you are a military veteran, you know that there are five types of discharges. The discharge that is not acceptable is a dishonorable discharge because at that point you are no longer a veteran. So these positions require other than, uh, other than dishonorable discharge from the armed services of the United States with preference given to qualified disabled veterans and other qualified veterans in that order. Particularly for the lever, it requires one year professional experience in marketing, public relations, or a related field. Next slide. Okay, so DVOPs are tasked with providing veterans with individualized career and training services. One of the challenges that veterans may face when seeking job opportunities is the significant barriers to employment, also what we call SBEs for short, right? They include issues like substance abuse, mental health issues, homelessness, lack of a high school diploma, GED, uh, Vietnam veteran status. DVOPs, they provide intensive services to meet the employment needs of disabled veterans and other eligible veterans with the maximum emphasis directed towards serving those who are economically or educationally disadvantaged veterans with uh, essentially veterans with barriers to employment. We are actively involved in outreach efforts to increase program participation among those with the greatest barriers to employment. So you will, once the world opens back up, you may see us at stand downs. We work with faith, the faith-based community. We work essentially with anyone who is willing to work with us to try to reach out to the veteran uh, the veteran community within the veteran space. Next slide, please. Leavers, local veteran employment representatives. They advocate for job seeking veterans by serving as liaisons with employers and training providers. The leavers conduct outreach to employers and they engage in advocacy air efforts with hiring executives to increase employment opportunities for veterans. They actively encourage the hiring of disabled veterans and generally assist other veterans to gain and retain employment. The leavers conduct seminars for employers and job search workshops for veterans who are seeking employment. They facilitate priority of service and helping employers and other organizations to understand what that means in regards to employment training and placement services that are furnished to veterans uh, by all staffs of uh, by all staff members of the employment service delivery system. Next slide. 
to meet the specific, excuse me, to meet the specific needs of veterans, particularly veterans with barriers to employment, the DVOP and the Lever staff are thoroughly familiar with the full range of job development services and training programs available at the state workforce agency one stop career centers, Department of Veterans Affairs, vocational rehab, both federal as well as state and employment program locations. So we are a one stop shop and we are often found either in the unemployment office or an American job center as part of the partnership. And that's all I have. Fantastic, thank you for that presentation, Marlena. And with the conclusion of Marlena's presentation, we're gonna go ahead and uh, wrap up our session here today again. I know I've mentioned this uh, before, but I just want to reiterate it again. This session has been recorded and it will be uploaded to the Illinois WorkNet YouTube channel later this afternoon. Again, if you're not sure how to access that, go onto YouTube, enter into the search field Illinois WorkNet. Once you're onto our channel, you're going to go down to the uh, virtual job fair playlist. And again, all of the sessions uh, for this week's event will be uploaded there uh, by the end of this week. So be on the lookout for that. And again, those videos will also be linked to each of the respective employer booths for the employers who uh, have participated in this week's session. Again, we wanna thank all of our presenters who joined us here today. Wanna to thank um, again, all of the partners, all of your inexhaustible work efforts, uh, you know, to put these things together, we couldn't do it without you. And of course, a big thank you to uh, Rep Buckner's office as well. Uh, for all of the effort that they have put into marketing and promoting this event and helping it go off as well. So thank you, everyone. Again, our final session will be taking place tomorrow at the same time, 10 to 12 p.m. Tomorrow will be those small group interviews and all of the participating employers uh, will be there. And you can join again those sessions to have an opportunity to speak with uh, those employer reps that you heard here today, ask them any questions that you'd like to directly, so on and so forth. With that, I hope you all have a great day. Thank you.